Hey folks, I was sent this Z70 Ultra keyboard kit by Melgeek at the beginning of the year and have been testing it since then. I want to apologize in advance if you see specks of dust on the follow-up b-roll as I've used this keyboard quite a lot. I usually test my review units for a few days and then stop to keep them clean for the filming part, but with this one, I really had a hard time putting it away. It sells for $180 and then you have to provide your own switches and keycaps, so let's see if this board is worth its selling price. So this Melgeek Z70 Ultra comes in a cool box with their logo all over. Looks pretty cool. I had already unboxed it, so some of the foam is already out, but you'll get the accessories, which are a USB-C cable and then mounting screws, and finally the keyboard. It's worth noting that this cable has a pretty interesting texture. Melgeek also sent my way 70 TTC bluish white switches, and they can be sort of described like lighter holy pandas. More on that later. And now, looking at the board a bit closer, it's quite sleek, the screws go under, leaving you with a clean design from the top. It's composed of multiple layers, so the top part of the case acts as the plate, then there's a foam insert, the PCB, a silicone dampener, and the bottom plate. It's worth noting that my PCB had a bit of a spill on it, not too sure what this is, but it worked fine in the end, so I guess it's okay. Okay, so now to the build, I decided to lube these TTC bluish white switches, and yes, that's their real name, with some Tribosys 3203. And while I do so, I can share something special about them. TTC figured out a way to make them bottom out quieter, with some super long springs and a bit of lube at the base of the spring, and all of that without adding silicone dampeners, as these can feel a bit mushy, so that's a pretty unique feature. The top clack is, however, not quieter than any normal switch. Still, I really like these switches. They have pretty light springs at 42.5 grams, although they do feel a bit heavier than that, likely due to their bumpy leaf that looks a lot like a holy panda stem. I went ahead and lubed some C3 screw and stabs for this build, but the case isn't compatible with PCB mounted stabilizers, even though the PCB is kind of weird, so I'll end up replacing them with some random plate mounted ones I had laying around. So I started by installing the foam insert in the case and then added the PCB. And here there are, I believe, eight screws to secure the PCB in the top part of the case. So here, like I said, the PCB mounted spacebar stab wasn't coming out as much as on the rest of the case. That's because the recess part for stabs is not inverted for the spacebar, while the stab that goes there actually is. Anyway, with plate mounted stabs, it's all good. I was able to finalize the PCB installation by adding the silicone dampener and then the bottom plate, where there are six Torx screws to add, and the silicone dampener is just thick enough, so there's good resistance when locking those screws in. Feels pretty good. I installed all the switches I previously lubed. It's worth noting that this PCB has south-facing sockets, so you won't get any interference with Cherry Profile keycaps, such as GMKs. And here, with a 65% layout, I only add three or four extras at the end. I then installed my keycaps, I decided to use some white on black EPBT Cherry Profile keycaps. These are great, with double shot legends, and with this black case, you can't really go wrong. So looking a bit closer at this now fully built keyboard, it's a really nice unit. With the foam insert and the silicone dampener, it feels super dense and sounds great. It really feels like a solid aluminum bar, no flex at all. The USB-C port at the left is also a nice touch, potentially helping to route the cable if you wanted it at the left anyway. The case is low profile, which not everyone likes, but I personally really like this design with the rounded corners. It's also easier to clean up, if that counts. At the bottom of the top surface, you also get LED indicators on both sides, and they're just copies of each other. Again, another unique design aspect with this PCB and case combo. It looks like it's made from super thin and punctured aluminum, so it doesn't really show when the LEDs are off. Pretty cool. Now to this layout, it's probably the closest thing to NC standard in a 65% format. The only odd key is the narrower right shift key. You'll need a 1.75 unit key there, and then for the rightmost column, you'll need keycaps with the right profile for each row, and it wasn't really an issue with this EPBT keycap set. And speaking of the set, it feels and looks awesome. The F and J keys have deeper dishes, so it's pretty easy to locate them, and they don't have those notches that end up dirty over time. Now to these TTC bluish whites, I think they're great. 
They have a tactile bump similar to Holy Pandas, but with a much lighter spring, so they're easy to actuate, but still very tactile. They don't have any pre-travel, and given how light they are, you will likely bottom out with these. They don't seem to have issues moving back up, which can be a problem when you pair a big bump with light springs, but again, mines are lube, so that probably helps. They sound a bit funny, since the bottom out is quiet while the top clack isn't, but overall, I really like these switches, and for around 48 cents a switch, they're a solid option, and something that's also really unique given how light they are. But don't take my word for it. Let's hear a sound test. So this keyboard has SMD LEDs under every switch. They're very bright and vibrant, so that's cool. I tried using Melgeek's very own software, but it didn't recognize the keyboard for some reason. Uh, but it's not really an issue as this Z70 Ultra is QMK compatible. And in fact, the default config already has LED controls with the function key. Here mine has a Windows logo on it, but still. With it, you can cycle through animations with W, uh, then change the speed with A and S, change the hue with E and R, and then saturation and brightness with the T and Y keys, and then U and Y keys respectively. I'm not sure if you can have per key lighting here. The QMK configurator didn't have this option when I picked the Z70, but there's a lot of room for configuration and there's a lot of static light configs preloaded to where you can play with the hue to change the color theme. It's good enough for me personally. So in terms of reprogrammability, like I said, it's QMK compatible. So there's no real limit to what you can do on multiple layers. This exact keyboard was added to the QMK GitHub repo, so it's available on the QMK configurator with the default mapping matching factory configs. And then in the QMK toolbox, you can directly select the board, so you don't need to bother picking the right controller to flash. On this board, the reset key combo is function plus pipe by default, but again, that can be remapped if desired. There's no VIA support for now, although I did see on their Discord that it could be added eventually, but it wasn't a priority. So to conclude this video, I feel like this is a very solid board. If you like low profile cases like I do, you won't be disappointed with this sleek design. It features south facing switch sockets for better keycap compatibility. I like how solid it feels and its acoustical performance. The LED shine bright and are vibrant. The LED indicators on each side look great and QMK support is a welcome feature. The main downsides are the fact that the case doesn't work with plate mounted stabs for the spacebar and that's a bit annoying given that the PCB supports it. It seems like a design issue here. Then the provided software doesn't seem to work but at least QMK works so you're not left behind in terms of key remapping. So that wraps it up for today. I hope you learned something in this video. Please let me know down below if you want more videos like these on higher end keyboards. I tend to feature affordable units normally, but these higher end quality keyboards are much nicer to build and review. I have an NK65 entry edition coming soon from Novel Keys, so I might have to make a video around this build. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you like the video and subscribe as I'll see you in the next video.